Matias Antonove. Okay, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today, um, part of the Urban Edge Conference. And I'll present some work uh, that I've been uh, doing with Rahul Shurastrav, who's over here. And also uh, as part of uh, Spark, working uh, here in Bombay uh, last year. And uh, um, uh, in connection to some of my studies on uh, incremental development, uh, which I'm doing in Tokyo. Um, so first of all, I'm very happy to represent Tokyo uh, to the Urban Edge Conference because uh, I see it's not on the uh, global uh, Urban Edge map, um, which is uh, uh, in a way surprising and not so surprising because you know, Tokyo is surprising because Tokyo is the biggest city in the world uh, still with 30, uh, biggest urban agglomeration, I, I should say, in the world with uh, 30 million people. Um, and it's not so surprising in a way uh, because Tokyo is, is a very, very hard uh, um, city to comprehend from, uh, from a, a planning perspective in a way. So it seems to be a, a very much an exception. But uh, actually what is, what is seemingly an exception in terms of urban planning and urban development seems to be in fact uh, rather the, the rule in many cities. Uh, Tokyo has developed uh, very much uh, in an organic way. Uh, we have the, to use the, this word organic, which is uh, you know, coming, becoming a buzzword these days. Uh, because we can't use the word slum, uh, because Tokyo is, you know, high, is ranking very, very high on the Saskian, Saskia Sassen index of global cities. So, you know, how, how could we call that uh, a slummy type of environment? So what I'm talking about really uh, today in, in, in bon for both Bombay and Bogota uh, is, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> I got confused by Enrique Peña's presentation. So uh, uh, Tokyo, of course, and Bombay um, is uh, not the core, not the historical core of the city, but the periphery. Uh, the periphery of Tokyo, which extends to 100 kilometers uh, wide. It's, uh, it's still uh, a sprawling city, a uh, never-ending landscape. Same with Mumbai. Uh, we're focusing not on the uh, colonial core, uh, an historical center, uh, but rather on the, on the sprawling uh, city. Um, and uh, we think that in some ways uh, the development of Tokyo, the incremental, de the history of, uh, urban history of Tokyo can inform some of the discussions we're having on Daravi. Uh, this is an area of uh, one area uh, which is pretty central in Tokyo actually, uh, called Shimoktazawa on below, uh, an area of uh, uh, Daravi. And uh, both are uh, developed as unplanned, um, but uh, the above uh, image of Tokyo uh, is uh, an image of a regulated unplanned environment. So it's a legitimized space, whereas the uh, image below is, an is seen as being illegitimate urban space. Uh, very brief history of Tokyo. Uh, sorry. Tokyo developed uh, uh, from a rural area to uh, an urban area in, in a very uh, a gradual way. Um, here we see, uh, actually Tokyo was destroyed twice during this century and uh, after the war was very much redeveloped uh, as, a, as a slum, very fast, uh, had to be redeveloped. And the, the history of uh, urban development of Tokyo is also the history of its economic development. And uh, we feel that the two are very, very much uh, interconnected interconnected in a very deep way uh, that I think is important to uh, fully acknowledge if we want to think about uh, the development of places like Daravi. Um, so images of the post-war Tokyo reconstruction. Uh, the bazaar economy, the market economy, the small retails, the, the, the street vendors were totally part of the uh, economic fabric, uh, the economic fabric and urban fabric of uh, Tokyo at this point. And it's still very much present. Uh, you know, this is uh, today's black, uh, historical black market. And in Tokyo, very little things are kept for histor historical reasons. They just uh, are kept because they still have a function. And uh, uh, so the, the economic uh, of, uh, uh, development of Tokyo, the economic miracle of Japan, in a way, uh, I want to say, is uh, um, uh, in the shadow of those you know, skyscrapers which represent this economic miracle, uh, we have the whole history of the local areas of Tokyo. And we think this is, this is the other side, uh, the untold story about the miracle of uh, uh, the, the economic development of Tokyo. Um, 
So um, just uh, before I go back to this, I just want to talk a little bit about the typology. Uh, the typology is very, very much one of low rise, high density, uh, totally mixed use, actually uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, mixed in terms of uh, uh, commercial, residential. And uh, some areas still look, uh, so those pictures, it seems that they've been taken in Sao Paulo uh, or Mumbai, but actually this is Tokyo. And then it's not the image we usually have of, of this uh, highly developed city. But uh, it's not seen as being uh, something which is uh, uh, strange in the Japanese context because the city is ever-changing, ever-evolving. Uh, so this is just being seen as, as, a, as, a, as a part of the natural evolution. Um, these images uh, show uh, some connections in terms of the typology between Tokyo and Daravi. Uh, here uh, on uh, the left hand side we have Daravi. It's a Photoshop collage. Uh, on the other side is Tokyo. Uh, so the two come together to say you know, a statement about you know, what we see as a, a, an environment which is hopelessly uh, seen as a slum and uh, with a, uh, uh, no form is actually something which could very well become a Tokyo someday. Uh, if we, you know, if it was led to develop and regulated, again, oop. No? Okay. Uh, again, this is a Daravi insertion in the Tokyo landscape. Uh, again, uh, here we see uh, a black market in Tokyo with uh, some Daravi structure in it. Uh, and here, on the last one, a uh, little insertion of uh, uh, some, some Daravi landscape into a, a Tokyo street. And it doesn't feel out of place. Um, so, you know, the story is really one which is beyond typology. Uh, typology is, uh, in a way, uh, uh, you know, almost anecdotic uh, in this case. But, you know, it's the, the story is uh, the story of the, the informal economy, of the street economy of Tokyo. Uh, and this is really, really much what we think should be taken care of in the case of Daravi. Um, because if we uh, 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 don't see that the development of Daravi, the redevelopment of Daravi is not the development of Daravi. And I mean redevelopment as in Daravi redevelopment plan. Uh, the, the development is something which is ha happening organically and which happened organically in the case of, uh, of Tokyo. And redevelopment is something which comes uh, imposed on an, a process, an urban, pro economic pro an urban and economic process which is going on at the moment. Uh, and if we break this, uh, this process in brutal ways, we also completely destroy uh, the, the fragile uh, urban uh, economic networks which is being put in place. I'm talking about economics, but I could also have the same argument for culture. Um, so uh, I want to conclude uh, by uh, uh, saying that, you know, what, why is this important? I think uh, basically we have to think about it in, uh, we have to change the paradigm, the paradigm of uh, uh, the way we see urban planners, the work of urban planners, also of uh, uh, financial institutions. Uh, how do we really provide uh, for those areas? How do we really intervene? We have to intervene from within this process, I believe, uh, if we want to preserve some type of uh, uh, this fragile development which is happening. Taravi is a complete powerhouse in terms of economic activity. Uh, so, in, in terms of, uh, um, I just, I'll just finish by, by showing this last slide of uh, Kodiwada, uh, where we're having a, a workshop in March uh, with uh, Pukar and the residents of Kodiwada, and we invite you all to participate uh, uh, to uh, this, this workshop, which is an, a, an attempt to uh, look at the, at the Daravi from within. Thank you very much. <laughs>